Well, for more on the G20 summit, let's head live to Hugo Dobson, who's also standing by in Buenos Aires. He's head of the School of East Asian Studies at the University of Sheffield. He's also with the Global Policy Journal. Welcome, Hugo. Good evening, uh, Rochelle. So, Hugo, what does this meeting allow leaders to accomplish in this group setting that they may otherwise not? Well, I think with the G20 format, what you've got to look at is the sort of informal nature of it, the uh, personal nature. So it allows leaders to really get together in a room uh, and speak very closely with each other, trying to move away from the bureaucracy of a lot of these international organisations. So it borrows its format from the G7, uh, the, 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 the organisation, the format that preceded it. Now, there's obviously a lot on the table. You have the highly anticipated Xi-Trump meeting, climate change, WTO reforms, the potential signing of the US-Mexico-Canada agreement, and of course, the fallout from the journalist Jamal Khashoggi killing, and this as Saudi Arabia's crown prince attends, among other issues. It's a full plate. How are they going to, to assign their time? What's going to really dominate these talks? Well, I think the Argentine president, Macri, is going to make uh, utmost efforts to try and refocus attention upon the actual agenda that has been worked out over the last year or so. So we've got a very focused agenda. We've got three pillars. We've got the future of work. We've got infrastructure. Uh, and we've also got food security. And these have been carefully selected to ensure that Argentina is representing the developing world at the G20 summit. So I think what we will see will be Argentine efforts to try and refocus attention on the agenda that's been developing and not to get too distracted by these other issues. And as you say, there are many of them. And it's certainly going to be tough. We know that global markets and trade partners, when you have the leaders of the world's two biggest economies and President Xi and Trump meeting for talks, what are the expected outcomes there? I think looking at this, uh, this bilateral between Xi and uh, Trump, I would personally not raise expectations too high. Um, bilaterals are a natural part of this summit process. It's not just about the multilateral meetings. There are also a number of bilateral meetings taking place. So it's nothing out of the ordinary for uh, uh, Trump and Xi to meet on the periphery of the summit. And I think also the fact that they've not had time to actually uh, develop uh, a proper uh, agenda and outcome uh, for this meeting means that we shouldn't really expect uh, a full-blown comprehensive resolution. We may see some movement, and as John Bolton was saying in your previous report, we may see the beginnings of, uh, of an agreement to come later. But I think this will just uh, provide uh, those beginnings, really. And certainly there's a number of sideline discussions between world leaders. How do you see that impacting, though, their cooperation on broader issues, on, on efforts like climate change, which do require a global effort? No, absolutely. Um, you're not going to see bilateral meetings really address those. That's got to come back into the multilateral forum that the G20 is. Um, now, as I say, these are pressing issues like climate change uh, and uh, WTO reform and also reform of other organizations like the IMF. Um, but as I say, I think you're seeing that uh, Argentina has made the strategic decision not to overload the agenda too much, to focus very much on those three developing uh, world issues of infrastructure, future of work and food security, and at the same time try and give the summit a regional feel. So you've got new representatives coming, you've got the President of Chile coming, you've got the Jamaican Prime Minister coming. That's a deliberate effort on the part of Argentina to give this a much more regional feel as a summit than it has had previously. So you may see big issues like climate change take a back seat, uh, possibly until Japan picks up the G20 presidency next year.